Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So here we can see a closer look at my preamp using a valve. Now, if you're wondering what this thing is, this is one of the power supplies. We'll go into that in just a little while. Anyway, we're going to taste, I mean, test, not taste. I mean, if I tried tasting some of this, I'd zap myself. But let's take a look at some of the voltages here. I hope you can see the meter because no matter where I put it, it's always glaring somehow. So anyway, let's take a look at the supply voltage, which we've got right here. We have 225 volts. Let's test this plate here, which is connected here. You might hear a few crackles and pops while I'm doing this. We have 124 volts on that plate which is the first plate. And now we're going to test the voltage of the second plate, which is connected to this capacitor here. And then that goes out to the laptop. So on the second plate, we have about the same 120, almost 126 volts. So that's biased nice and good. Because we've got about half the supply voltage there. And of course, the filament supply, as you can see, is about 6.4. And I've got a 12 volt supply here, which is written just under 12 volts, which supplies this microphone with phantom power. And this big resist, big variable resistor here, that's the gain control. And in the previous clip, I had that set a bit too high and it was overdriving, but it should be all right now. Anyway, enough of that, time for some schematics. And here is the schematic of the preamp that you were just listening to, and as, as a matter of fact, still are. As you noticed, I've drawn the version that's for use with a capacitor microphone here. But if you're not using a capacitor microphone, if you're using a dynamic microphone, let's say a moving coil microphone, you can omit this resistor here and just connect that cathode directly to ground. Get rid of this 12 volt supply and this resistor here because you won't use, be needing to use those and it'll work just fine. 
That resistor there is just to lower the gain a little bit when using a when using a capacitor microphone because these kind of microphones do have a little bit more output than a standard moving coil. Anyway, there's one very small change that I made, couldn't really avoid making, and that's this 470k variable resistor here. I thought I had a few spare in my stock, but I don't, so I had to use a 47k instead. I mean instead. But it doesn't seem to affect the amplifier's performance, it still seems to work so. Even though just one component is different to what I wanted to use, it still seems to work just fine. And I had to do quite a few revisions of this, I think this is like the third. Because when I first made this, there was so much gain you would not believe. I was just overdriving everything it was connected to. It was ridiculous. Now I know there's a couple of extra components for when I connect this to my laptop. So let me just draw those in. So from the output, I've got... a resistor here, like this. One hundred K. It looks more like one six six K, but that's one hundred K. I know. I'll put a strike through the zero, like an old computer. Then you can see that it's actually one hundred. And then, running out of space here. A capacitor. Yeah. At 10 microfarads. Well, that's the plusative side of the 10 microfarad. And then that goes off to this connector that connects to my laptop. Like that. And these two boxes here, well, these are the two power supplies. So, let's take a big look, I mean, let's take a closer look inside this one, because this is the more interesting of the two. So, this is the high tension, or high voltage, or whatever you want to call it, power supply. Basically, this is the power supply for the anode part of the circuit. Seems crazy, all this stuff stuff just to power up one tube but it's worth it so anyway let's go from here where the power goes into here where the power goes out so firstly we've got two transformers and these two transformers are exactly the same the only difference is that this one is mounted vertically whereas this one is mounted the other way so mains goes into this transformer and I can switch that on and off via this switch here. There is also another couple of wires going off this switch, shorting out this resistor, and I'll just I'll go into what that is to why that's there and later on. But anyway, so we get 240 volts going in this side, 12 volts going out that side. Some of that also goes into this relay, which I will also explain later. But anyway, the rest of that 12 volts goes into this transformer and comes out again at mains voltage. So, you know, 240 in, 240 out. Completely isolated. Anyway, the output of this transformer goes along this cable here and out to the connector on the end, which you should be able to see. So, connector there. And also, the output from this transformer goes into this resistor and then into this rectifier here. And I did look that up to make sure it can handle the voltages and it can, as well as the capacitors. So anyway, that gets rectified by this little rectifier here. That gets smoothed by this capacitor here. And then further smoothed by this. Now this is a transformer which I'm just using the primary from. I'm using that as an inductor. So positive comes out of this capacitor then into the primary of this transformer then out again and into this capacitor where it's smoothed 
And of course, we've got that DC output going along this wire here, and also to the connector. Now, I should really label what these outputs are, but basically, there's a 240 volts isolated AC output, there's a high voltage DC output there, and well, that's basically it. So, I hear you ask, what about this resistor and this relay, which I don't think you could see earlier? What about those two? What are they for? Okay, so this resistor is a limiter because it's in series between this transformer and the rectifier. So it will charge up slowly and limit the current, which is good for things like preamplifiers and stuff like that. However, if I put the switch in this position, this resistor gets shorted out, so that might just as well be a straight piece of wire right there. So then the transformer is directly connected to this rectifier. And we get the full output of the transformer going into the capacitors and then out of the power supply. So, that's off. That's on with low power, with the resistor in the circuit. And that's on with high power, with the resistor out of the circuit. And now, what about the relay? Well, the relay is there to discharge the capacitors when this thing turns off. Because when this transformer is on, we get 12 volts going across these two wires here, into this diode and capacitor, which turns on the relay. And this capacitor is connected across the normally closed pins of the relay. So when the relay comes on, those pins open, so this capacitor can charge up. And when the power is turned off, the relay deactivates, so these contacts close, and the capacitor discharges through these two resistors. All right, time to take some measurements. So I'm going to turn this on, and you'll see the voltage start to climb. There we go. This is measuring the DC output, so that resistor there, I'm not going to touch it, but that resistor there is limiting the quickness of how much it charges. So I got a bit of a cold, so I'm not really able to think straight at the moment. It's still climbing. That will get up to about 300 and something volts at the thing. Um, my train of thought is really gone. That will get up to about 300 and something volts with no load on it. So, let's um, take a measurement of what we've got on the isolated AC. Let's get my meter in there. We have about 234 volts. Anyway, I put the meter back onto the DC. Make sure the range is on hundreds of volts so I don't blow this thing, so I don't blow the auto ranging of this out. Okay, there we go, I connected it the wrong way around, but it doesn't matter. So we've got about 313 volts and still climbing. Now when I turn this off, you see the voltage drops quite quickly. I've got those. 300 ohms worth of resistors discharging the capacitors. So that works pretty well. And that way, you see, the good thing about that is discharging the capacitors that way. I mean, I could have just put a resistor across the capacitor and have that discharge the capacitors when they're when this thing is not in use, but the thing is. I want this thing to be as hum free, as ripple free as possible, so I did it that way, which I think is a lot better. So anyway, rambling on here, and I haven't even described what this thing is for. Well, this is a little switch mode power supply that I made, and that's for the filaments of the tubes on this side here. This is the 6 volt output, this is the 12 volt output for the different types of tubes. This is the ground, and 
I can actually use the outputs of that second transformer to power this power supply. And that way, as you can see, it's connected up to the AC outputs. And that way it's completely isolated. And we got our six volts there. I don't know how well you can see that. See, 6.49 volts on there. And just over 12 volts, well, just over 13 volts on that side. So, that's working really good. So, let's take a little look inside the switch mode supply. Let's get these wires out of the way. Some purists may think that this is blasphemy using a switch mode supply in part of a tube circuit. But I don't care. Let's pull out the actual supply itself. And this is what we have inside. These came out of a couple of World War supplies. Now this one you may remember from an older video. This one I modified. It was originally a 5 volt supply. This, this is now a 6.4 volt supply. I was originally going to go for 7 volts, but when I was experimenting with it, got it to 6.4, so I decided I'd just stick with that. So yeah, that's a nice steady voltage. Now if the camera would just stay still. And this one here is the 12 volt supply, or supposed to be a 12 volt supply. I don't see any sign of any kind of feedback circuits. I mean, there might be something on the other side of the circuit board, I can't really remember. But there's only one output capacitor, no inductor. Yeah. And so this one isn't even regulated. Because you saw the output voltage is 13 volts and it should be 12 volts. So yeah, put a, whatever load that was originally going to power, that would have brought it down to 12 volts, but it's good enough for my needs. This is the schematic of the power supply, well the high voltage power supply for the plate. This is the main transformer here, and as you can see, the 12 volt goes into this capacitor, I mean diode and capacitor to energize this relay coil. There's probably still quite a, bot of, quite a lot of ripple on that relay coil, but not enough to make it de-energize. And that output of that transformer also goes into this other transformer. So it's stepped down to 12 volts by this transformer here. Then it's stepped up to mains voltage again by this transformer here. Here's the 10K resistor that can be switched in and out the circuit. You can see the switch at the bottom there. And then there's the rectifier that goes into this capacitor to smooth it. Then the filter. Don't know how many micro henries or milli henries or whatever henries that is, so I've had to leave that out. I've had to leave that unmarked. And then into one final smoothing capacitor, then that goes out to the circuit. So when this transformer turns on, this relay coil gets energized, which pulls it from, which opens the relay contacts. So this capacitor can charge along with this one here. And when the power's turned off, this relay coil will de-energize. These contacts close. The capacitors, both these capacitors, get discharged through this resistor here. And within seconds, it's safe to handle. So put in two ordinary mains transformers back to back makes a pretty good tube supply transformer but wait some of you are saying I live in a 120 volt area there's no way I can do this yes there is all you need is a different kind of rectifier the voltage doubler and here is exactly the same circuit modified for 120 volt use and as you can see replace that bridge rectifier with a voltage doubler and that will work just as good it's basically two half wave rectifiers put together because 
this capacitor gets charged up through this diode here and this capacitor gets charged up through this diode here and together we get the same output voltage or very similar the 240 volt version okay so now I'm going to do the demonstration of the voltage doubler so I've got two transformers here I know they're not identical transformers but the point is we'll get about 120 volts AC out of this one or should do anyway because I've got this transformer feeding this one you know the low voltage output of this one going into the low voltage side of this transformer and then using the 120 volt tap from this transformer and we can measure that on the meter so plug this in and I can find it all right there we go so okay well it's a bit difficult to see what it says on the meter but trust me that says about 107 volts so a little bit lower than what we want but in the ballpark anyway I'll just unplug this so I don't shock myself while I'm doing this I'm gonna now connect up the voltage doubler or voltage doubling rectifier or whatever you want to call it and see what kind of voltage we get off that and remember this is exactly the same as this now put my meter onto DC and we'll measure the voltage that we get across these two capacitors let's plug in and my meter's auto ranging for some reason I thought I'd turn the auto range off because I don't really want to blast the auto range but as you can see we're getting way more than 160 volts or whatever it was 269 volts and still climbing and remember that supply that I made when you put a load on it the voltage will go down a bit so this is the unloaded voltage basically and as you can see it's working pretty good I don't know what that's gonna actually come to but that would actually be a little bit higher if this transformer was putting out the full 120 volts but you get the general idea so there you go anyway that's just about it for this episode of cool dude Clem's electronic workshop and well this episode of tube time on Clem's electronic workshop on the next episode um what should we do on the next episode magnetic cartridge preamp maybe using valves or maybe a maybe a valve power amplifier using one of these triode pentode combinations i don't know